I think it's a lure stack. Pretty fine hand. <laughs> How's the second do against Hammer and Shadow? Pretty good, um, in my experience. Chalice the Void goes a long way. You have a lot of cyber cards for Hammer. Shadow's definitely a closer matchup. Um, I, I haven't minded it in the past. Luris Rogrin Triumph is pretty interesting. What's my opinion in March in the flex spot for Mono White Hammer? Oh, Milligan. Second time playing Mill today. Uh, it's fine. Uh, I think that it's. I, I think it's not a card you want in the main deck. I don't. I don't think that you should really ever uh, main deck removal and hammer. I, I. I don't think that that's usually very good. Um, but I. I do think that it is a totally reasonable sideboard card. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. March of that we like definitely. Kind of reminds, it reminds me of Paprika too, but I kind of also see like Spirited Away in the art too. What is Mill Splash White for? Uh, prismatic ending. Rest in peace sometimes. I've actually been listening to some of the Paprika soundtrack lately. It's a really good soundtrack. Hey Spider, how's it going? I was watching you play some of the Red Black uh, Hizutsu's Last Reckoning deck uh, last night. Looks pretty good, I think. I was kind of thinking, like, can we can we splash white for Ephemerate? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get Triome again. Hopefully, they don't have a trap. Oh, Pepper, good. They did. Oh, I did. I actually, I I like Berserk soundtrack too. That's actually really cool that they. They did the same thing. It's a fun little fact there. Paprika Pig. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a, it's an anime movie. It's, uh, it's, it's really trippy. The art's really good. Um, it's a good movie. So about the deck, even if I didn't run super hot. Yeah, I think the deck looks pretty cool. Might go to use Guts of Sword and Elden Ring. I can't. I haven't found it yet, but I want to. I, de I definitely have. I'm already. I'm doing a Strength Great Sword build, so we'll see how it goes. Although, like you know, Guts of Sword has been in the other games. It is usually not like that good of a weapon. It's usually like the fourth or fifth best Great Sword. Oh, I I don't know how it is in this game. Be cool to have it be buffed. Uh, I think I'll just pass here again. Both times we played against Mill today, they've been the white-based version. This is definitely the kind of position you want to be in post-board, where you just have a lot of mana. Um, in post-board positions, when you have Nexus of Fate in the deck, just having a ton of mana usually translates to a win, because the more they deck you, the closer you get to taking infinite turns. On this board, I'm not sure that that's going to be the case. That being said, they're really not doing all that much. Gonna just go ahead and deluge again. I'll take Solitude and Valakid Awakening. I'll play Otawara, Blood Sun with Cryptic Up. Which is Blood Sun's pretty nice, turning off Shelldock IO, Field of Ruin, and their fetch lands. They just let it resolve. We might be going to discard here. Let's discard the Seacrum Coast, I guess. There's Lurus and seven other cards. Lantern, Excel, Deluge, I guess. Gonna have to be okay with that. Not gonna cryptic it. Does Besagia worry me at all? Not really. I, are you guys like playing against Besageu? I feel like I almost never see it. Like some decks have it, of course, but it's like a one of, and a lot of the fair decks. Titan has more copies, but Titan's already already like a pretty good matchup. If it gets marginally worse, I'm just not that worried. One of Dreadnought good in Fiddlebender. You're a lot worse at crewing it. Um. 
<clears throat> but it's still Saga target. You would probably have to be a different build, a fiddle bender with like four nettle cysts. Besides you killing Bloodson. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Yeah. So not too worried about the Titan matchup. It's it's historically been pretty good, I feel. Okay, with the Lantern in play, I think we're supposed to go for a Valakid Awakening here. And I'm going to put back probably the Fury, Steam Vents, and then maybe Deluge, maybe not Deluge. Probably just Fury, Steam Vents. Assuming this resolves. The, th the thing about Basaju is it only kills Lotus Field if Blood Sun is in play. So in that matchup, I, I really feel like it's, like, it's, it's, Basaju is almost always killing Blood Sun, not Lotus Field. Because it only kills Field if Blood Sun is in play. And they, they should care more about the Blood Sun instead, right? At least in most situations. I haven't found the Teferi yet. Had one milled. Weird, weird, weird. Why would they sack Lantern before casting Visions? I, I, I know they want to get to draw three, but this would at least give them better info on like when to sack the, the Lantern. I think maybe they, maybe they thought that I would flashback the Illusion response. Does Blood Sun let Bounce Lands come into play untapped? Yes, it does. Which is a bit awkward against Titan, but it's it's also not that big a deal. So one of Gingerbrood and Fiddlebender. I think Gingerbrood's like only good if you're playing like a lot of cranial platings and a lot of um I let this go. If you're playing a lot of cranial platings and um nettle cysts. Watching every day to see the uptick at artifact brews. We've barely seen Thoughtseize as much as we used to. Yeah, I mean this is something that uh every viewer of Aspiring Spike painfully finds out is i like to play a lot of different things but I, I usually go through phases where i'm brewing a lot with like one type of deck just trying to explore the idea or playing a lot of a lot of thoughtsies decks a lot of counterspell decks a lot of control decks a lot of tempo decks i just kind of go through phases like exploring archetypes exploring ideas but it all it all comes around eventually it all comes around eventually Not me playing Thoughtseize being the meta. Oh, I see. I mean, Grixis Shadow is still one of the most popular decks in the format. Thoughtseize is alive and well, I think. Is Squadron Hawk good in modern? Um, I have a really soft spot for Squadron Hawk. I've always really... I've, I've played a few times in the past. It's been a long time. Like, Modern Horizons one long. But I used to stream with uh, Squadron Hawk and Force of Virtue. I loved that deck. Shout out to anybody who remembers those days. That was quite a combo. They have Force of Negation? I'd be pretty surprised. No Chalice is bait. I mean, they're tapped out. They can't crack the Flooded Strand. This is game one against Mill. I I don't... I, like, Force of Negation was, is not a card I expect at all, so... Uh, like, it, it probably is correct to play the Chalice first, but, like... I, I, I'm just, like, not even, like, considering that they can have Force. Yeah, we did Trophy the last league. We did Trophy the last league. Just got Lotus Field officially back on the menu. Maybe it was Pierce, but they can't cast Pierce because Blood Sun stops the, the Flooded Strand. Could Squadron Hawk be good with March and Solitude? I, did you, that, we just talked about this, but... I think Squadron Hawk is, is better with specifically Force of Virtue, where you get to, like, lure... Like, ideally, you're playing a deck with a lot of... A wide deck with a lot of small creatures, and Force of Virtue makes your Hawks 2-2s, two or 3-3s three if you have two. And, and, like, it's also good with Solitude. It is good with March, but I don't know that you're playing all of these cards in the same deck. Like, the, the pitching on March is, is, it's nice, it's good upside, but it's also not, like, the biggest part of that card either. <laughs> Solves. 
Think my trophy rate is high because the deck is so much fun to play. Yeah, I get a lot of the fun EV. Get to enjoy myself way more than my opponents do. <laughs> Have they cast a white spell? They cast this in Lurus. <laughs> yeah, it's just, they, they usually play white for like prismatic ending and rest in peace. It's a bit weird. Okay, this is the second time we played this matchup. Um, I think I sideboarded something like this. I think this is exactly how I sideboarded. I don't know. I don't think I really need the rest in peace though. I'll just play three solitudes. Uh, we'll use the restroom too. Be right back. Let's go. For a second, I thought I, I thought I forgot to I board to board in the uh, the nexus. So. Okay. So I was like, yeah, 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 so, yeah. It's it, against mill. It's usually okay to board in one to three cards extra. It is intentional. I intentionally do it against mill. It kind of depends. It is important, though, that you don't, like, that you're not, like, bringing in goofy cards that are just no good against Mill. Like, I'm not going to bring in cards like Wear Tear, um, uh, you know, that are, that are that have, like, no targets just to pad my deck size. It's also important to keep, like, a somewhat re reasonable ratio of lands and spells. This deck, of course, has a pretty high land count. We're playing 26 lands, so it's, you know, usually okay to, to get a couple extra spells in here. I'd like to draw a white card potentially for the crab. It's probably also okay to just take a couple hits for the crab. Hope they don't surgical my lotus fields. Lotus fields definitely like the number one card I'd like here. Ending's not too bad though. This card and sign of Urza playable modern card. I've played it. It's it's not embarrassing in a lot of decks. It's also true that you know that you're making a card instruct is pretty good in the format. It's, it's kind of like an extra Urza saga in some ways. Was the last league also Lotus Field? Yeah, we five out with the last league. Okay, Tasha's me hitting 19 cards. Definitely more than usual. My Nexus of Fate is still in the deck, but they hit a second copy of Lotus Field, unfortunately for me. Slam of Blood Sun. Yeah, it's definitely an above average number of cards to hit, I think. Another Tasha's. This one only hitting seven cards. And my Nexus of Fate is still in the deck. So if I can get up to seven mana and have a threat in play, it's basically, uh, you know, it's almost impossible to lose from that position usually. Um, this turn, of course, we're just passing back. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if I even, like, have got to cast an Awakening. Awakening, obviously, just kind of an easy call if my opponent... Um, just plays like another Tasha's or something I can force. But I think I just probably want these as lands because I just want to get up to seven mana so I can start casting Nexus. Okay, Field of Ruin, which they can't activate. I also have two more Lotus Fields in the deck. Alright, I guess we force this. Three cards in their hand. Remember that uh, Blood Sun makes your Valakut Awakening as a land. Sorry, it's the attempt to triumph, right? Makes these enter untapped. Definitely mitigating this card's downside a lot. So my Force of Negation resolved. Will my Teferi Hero of Dominaria resolve? It will. Okay. Interesting draw. So we really want to fade another Tasha's. My opponent's got three cards in their hand. Blood Sun's cutting off uh, their two utility lands. Cycles of Fractured Sanity. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Fractured Sanity is pretty scary with, with me only having 17 cards in my library there. Probably is a bad sign for me. Okay, they can't crack their fetch land, so I don't, I don't need to Solitude right now. If they played another crab, I might have solituded. Twelve cards left in my library. I haven't like naturally flipped my Nexus once, which kind of stinks. Like it's not it's always nice when they mill over your Nexus, so like you effectively mill one less card. 
But I, I guess I guess we're thankful that the Nexus wasn't in any of these cards. I also that was my third Lotus Field, so I only have one Lotus Field left in the deck. Finding it would be a really big game. It's possible that I'm going to uh, dig deep for it with Valakut Awakening this turn. That that's land number seven, which is also really important. Okay, so I can actually I can actually cast a Nexus here. Is that what I want to do? I could also go Chalice on one and Solitude the Crab. I think that's probably a better use of my time. Although the problem the problem with not casting the Nexus is that if my I don't actually get land number seven in play, and if my opponent decks me, I just lose. So yeah, let me try to cast the Nexus. Obviously, if my opponent um if they have a counter spell, they have a counter spell, but they haven't countered any of like my like my Teferis or just anything yet, so. But they're also like pausing every time I cast a spell like they have one, so I I'm having a hard time making a read. Chalcedon 2, turn off counter spells. Well, Chalcedon 1 turns off a lot of their cards too. Chalcedon 2 turns off a, cup a handful of my cards. It's probably a conversation. Yeah, I think they were trying to activate their Shell Duck Isle. They realized they couldn't. So I have nine cards left in my deck. One of them is a Lotus Field, one of them is a Nexus. So I think I'm just supposed to Valakut Awakening for seven, and there's a good chance I hit both Lotus Field and Nexus. Like a very good chance. And that's, that probably translates to a win. Cool. Yeah, Field of Ruin, we have Blood Sun. <laughs> Any reason for getting rid of Monkey? Uh, Tron, like when I was playing Monkey, there was a lot more Tron at the time. Tron is definitely like a lot less popular, and Tron was a big part of the reason why you wanted to play uh, the Monkeys. Tron, Tron, and Belcher both like much less popular than they were. Yeah, I'm just trying to get to a point where I can get a threat in play and keep looping my Nexuses. Uh, can I play Fury and Nexus? I'm a little, I'm short now. I can't do it. Um, I guess we'll just Chalice of One. Sorry, helping. If you post the link in chat, I'll take a look now. Who does ultimate the Teferi? I have five cards left in my library. I think I'm going to plus. Okay, didn't find um, my Nexus again, so we'll just, we'll just pass back for this turn, I guess. Hold the Cryptic up. Hopefully that's good enough to let us survive. It's also true that if they, if they just mill me, I, 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 you know, I get to just start casting the Nexuses, so I really only lose the Tasha's plus like a counterspell for my Cryptic. Red, Black, Breach. Or, sorry, yeah, Red, Black, Breach? Okay. So the idea is that you're playing Thoughtseize over Expressive Iteration and Emery. And you get to play Synthesizer. Let this go. Okay, I, I will say that I do really like Experimental Synthesizer and Breach. I think this is a great home for it, especially with Grinding Station to sack it. Love that idea. Um, I do think it makes some sense with that thought to play Thoughtseize instead of Iteration, since Synthesizer is replacing your... Um, replacing your source of card advantage. But, like, how hard is it is it to cast this Oracle? It's not that hard with the Chromatic Star and Springleaf Drum. I don't know. I feel like I, I might still want to be in blue. I feel like I might still want to be in blue. This is interesting though. I I, I don't um I don't dislike it. Um 
Let's say plus the Teferi, then Nexus with Cryptic up on my instep. Yeah, I mean, you, you would just have to test it. I would really look and see, like, how hard is it to cast Oracle when you're comboing off. And I, I would, like, even if... Sorry, my Viking hat fell off. Even if you uh, do feel like, like, that you don't need iteration for card advantage, like, lose... Like, Emery, Emery is, like, good in Breach. Emery is, like... I feel like a pretty big loss, and I feel like you don't necessarily gain that much. Uh, so I guess I guess you I guess you ah uh, you lose Luris. Yeah, maybe maybe this is actually correct to build it this way. I would probably want like at least one blue land to fetch, and like maybe a second. Well, spring leaf jump's kind of awkward with this few creatures. I st still I, I like I like the idea. I like the idea. The main deck looks very good to me, with just maybe a few little few little tweaks the main deck looks very good um cyber looks pretty good too i would probably be splitting nile spell of lantern so you can have a you, like usually you just bring in one of those effects against um usually you just bring in one of those effects against uh merc and shadow those kind of decks and then and then you want uh, Lantern against Living End when they bring a Leyline against you. The Inquisitions in the sideboard are interesting. I think they're fine. Uh, you could, they could maybe be Duress instead. Duress is maybe more relevant. Or we'll just kind of think about it a little bit. We kind of like to see the third explosives of the board, maybe over like second Unholy Heat. I don't know that you need these heats necessarily. Uh, um, yeah, that just makes your mana so much better. You don't really have those concerns. Deck looks a lot cleaner at that point. Great suggestion. Like, yeah, lo love the list. Uh, yeah, you could consider maybe playing Voidwalker in the sideboard too. Um, over, you could play like one Lantern or Spellbomb as a tutor target. And you could maybe play some, um, some Voidwalkers too. I like it a lot though. You could also, you also maybe, you could maybe play Oni Cult Anvil in that deck too. Probably not. Never mind. Yeah, probably not. Okay. 6 0 on the day with Lotus Field. They're playing against a turn one Dark Slick Shores. Uh, definitely not that common of a start. They also have no companion. Uh, I think I'm just going to play Chalice and One. I think you can just play Grapeshot instead. Grapeshot kind of feels like an easy swap for Oracle. There's even some like breach pilots who say that Grapeshot is better than Oracle anyways. I don't know if that's true. Um, but I think in this red-black list it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Hell yeah. Opponent's playing some Kaito maybe. Any Kaito fans still left in the chat? Gotta be mill. Well, there's no Luris, so it's like kind of unlikely to be mill. Could be mill with maybe main deck Ashiok. What am I looking at? Oh my gosh, they're gonna sneak attack and massacre worm after your opponent combos off. This is just like uh Rakdos Charm against um Against twin back in the old days, <laughs> your opponent your opponent would combo off with Splinter Twin. You'd have Rakdos Charm in your hand, and then you then you would uh, put your acting lessons to good use, and pretend like you've never seen the twin combo before in your entire life. You have to go like, wait, what? You you're, you're gonna make how you're gonna make how many tokens? The key was to get them to say you know like a million tokens and kill them with Rakdos Charm. But it was it was you know you had to go like. You're gonna, you're gonna make how many tokens? With what? <laughs> you had to you had to really sell sell that you were losing there, or you know if they knew that you or the next time you go okay okay you got it. How many tokens are you making? It's like a joke, you know. How many tokens are you gonna make? And then you rack those charm them, kill them. <laughs> yeah, you call a judge. Well, does it really work this way? You get to make infinite tokens. But you can't make infinite tokens. How, how many tokens are you going to make? But then it's also like every single twin player in existence is just like, like if they're at a higher life total, they just, you know, 
<laughs> they just play around the rectus trap every single time. <laughs> They've seen the song and dance before. <laughs> I guess we're shocked to hold up the uh, solitude. I think I'm gonna cryptic the uh, charm here. It's pretty good to pick up. I've done that play multiple times with Rectus Charm. Yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> My ears are ringing. Okay, Field of Ruin, gonna get my island. That was the wrong tweet, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> the dinner bugbear, okay, I guess we'll, we'll take a look at this one. <laughs> modern testing, SCG and D. I have learned dinner bugbear is good for modern. Too good for modern. Ah, uh, we don't need to look at the, <laughs> the mode of salt. <laughs> GG's hacker. I haven't uh I haven't had a lot of moto salt lately. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've uh had do coop uh, copious amounts of moto salt. Could have like both their lotus fields there to be nice. The best part of the Rectus Charm cell is grabbing splits when they play it and read it slowly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have I tried Uro with this like over Fury? Yeah, someone was telling me that they, uh, if you pay hundreds of dollars, you can have a combination Uro Fury. I don't know if it's worth it though, because it's just like a growth spiral that you can escape. <laughs> Okay, uh, any other land's so good because I can flash back the illusion. Let's, uh, let's wait here. Can you just ask them to play it out in paper magic, like F6? Well, that's the thing, though. If you just go, can you play it out, they immediately know what's going on. I mean, they know what's going on either way. <laughs> um, but, but, like, nine times out of ten in paper magic, like, you just, you shortcut, you shortcut. I think Furo is the name for the Uro Fury. But we're also giving it Flash too. And has both casting costs. Has all three casting costs. You can cast it for this, or blue red <laughs> green <laughs> green blue one, or a pitching a red card. Okay, any land that's not the fourth lotus field we'll be pretty happy with. Can't be too upset with the cryptic command, I guess. Escape it by pitching a red card. Yeah, sure. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> it's all fine. Um, I think I'll just instep Solitude. I don't want to cast a Solitude on my instep there. And just like walk right into a um, two mana counter spell with me use that mana super easily. <laughs> yeah, we can play the Lotus Field here and watch the uh, the world burn. <laughs> how would kiki fit in the deck uh we've talked about uh a kiki variant of this deck a few times uh timu uh known blue red players also experimented with the idea a few times as well it's it's doable for sure um but it's also like to fairy hero dominaria is kind of like kiki jiki and deceiver exarch all in one card <laughs> it's kind of just like five mana win the game, but this doesn't die to uh, a creature removal spell. Okay, assuming we can dodge Force of Negation, we're pretty likely to be able to resolve to Fairy here. <laughs> Replicate Repudiate. People have been like really interested in that card lately. <laughs> It's kind of interesting here, like copying your incarnations is pretty good. But it's also like not free to have green mana. Double blue is not easy either. Alright, should they would they wouldn't like force of negation me, would they? 
There's no way. They wouldn't be that rude. Yeah, they, they'll be just way too rude to, uh, to force of negation me there. Dude, I don't understand. I don't understand why we've had we've had so many suggestions for Squadron Hawk today. I guess it's because we have March in the deck. <laughs> Plus, I love Squadron Hawk as much as the next guy, maybe even more. Me and my friends, we used to actually have like eight Squadron Hawks in our cube at one point. <laughs> not for not, it was not for very long, but for for a little while, we had like eight Squadron Hawks in the cube. So they have a two mana counter spell they can kill my Teferi if I don't if I play Cryptic instead of bouncing with Otawara. So if they fire up the Tarpit, I should probably use Otawara. Bounce the Tarpit. Or maybe it's better to bounce the Thought Thief. No, it's not, because then my Teferi dies. How about Legion Angel? Dude, I love Legion Angel. I, um, when Legion Angel came out, we played this like green white deck with one Legion Angel main, three side, and then you could Eld Armies call for it. Uh, and it was pretty mid. The deck was pretty medium. I totally forgot about that card though. I love that card. Why not tap draw? Uh, like I said, when I, <laughs> like I said, uh, this plays around a two mana counter spell, but they can't counter the Otawara. My cube, we have Squadron Hawk with Rule. You draft one in cube, you get two extra. Same with Accumulated Null. Just kind of interesting. I feel like, yeah, I feel like it's a pretty good number. <laughs> what? What? Okay. <laughs> I don't know how many uh, one drops they play. I probably want to play like two Rest in Peace. Should have like a Deluge and a Fury? Maybe not a Fury. Maybe an ending. March being instant is pretty nice. March also excels Tar Pit, which is cool. Maybe I can get rid of two endings, keep the all four Delusion, which is kind of awkward with Rest in Peace, but it's probably fine. And maybe on the play, I play an extra Chalice, or if I see that they've got like more one drops than I expect. Uh, yeah, we trophied with this deck before. We're currently, uh, six and one, sorry, six, six and oh on the day with Lotus Field. Up a game. As it's fair, was as good as Kiki Combo. No, it's better because Teferi is five mana win the game, and then Kiki Combo is, like, eight mana to get blown up by a removal spell, and then not win the game and draw no cards. <laughs> yeah, I never meant to imply Teferi was not, was worse, or as good as Kiki Combo. It's very way better. Yeah, draws co no cards and have no maidens. Your deck looks weak to modern all star deck club. Dude, so it was yesterday we played against um we played against the green black uh Elvish Reclaimer deck. But they they played the the green the Golgari Rod Farm, so I thought for sure they were Death Cloud. We were asking if you were in the chat. <laughs> but they were they weren't Death Cloud, of course. Treasure play those key combos seven mana lose game. Ah, fair enough. My, you know, my sensei, my mentor, Andrea Miguchi, once said, uh, no deck has ever been made better by putting Kiki Jiki in it. <laughs> wise words. Wise words from Mythic Champion Andrea Miguchi. No deck has ever been made better by putting Kiki Jiki in it. Oh, they scoop because I had the infinite combo of single to fairy. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the actual best deck club deck I've played was Elvis Reclaimer Absent deck. Yeah, that one's great because you get to sack your Elvis Reclaimers to your deck club. <laughs> Is that main deck grip? No, we cited it in. So you makes a difference. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's probably like the notable exception. <laughs> I see I'm playing some goblins today, actually, but I'm having a lot of fun with Lotus Field, as I always do with the stack. Let's send that one back. Go to five. Uh, 
Not a great mold of five. They did mold a six though. We're on the draw. So I guess not the end of the world. I would love to exile Creeping Tarpet with March. Oh, but no, if I Blood Sun, then I don't get to. <laughs> Jim was being mean to my Goblin Cyborg for not playing Thoughtseize. Yeah, the Cyborg that Jim played, I don't think was up to date. I wanted to play Magus. Um, yeah, but I don't feel like Thoughtseize is super mandatory, like all the Goblins players treat it. Yeah, all the Goblins pilots treat Thoughtseize like it's super duper mandatory, but I just like... I feel like I'd rather play Magus right now, and then the... Yeah, you know, there's other sideboard cards there too. I guess you probably want to chalice as early as possible. It's kind of close. Am I playing the SCG? Yeah, I'm playing the the Dallas SCG. Uh, it's actually my birthday weekend, and I'm local to the area, so I'm pretty excited. Do goblins get new toys in Neo? I mean, like, not really, but yes, also. <laughs> it got, like, the Red Channel Land, and then there's, like, a, a slightly better unclaimed territory. So it's, like, it, the deck is exactly the same, but it is, like, technically, technically up, has upgrades. We would play Cyber Hijutsu and Gabos. Maybe. Blowing up your own vials obviously like a bit weird, but it's maybe fine. You know, Clam Terrors, we can make Color Man activate each Crater Maker. Well, the Color Man matters for Pashik Mons. Uh, and it's almost never. Oh, no. Okay, let's bring in more Rest in Peace. That third Rest in Peace. <laughs> Um, yeah, it doesn't matter for Pashik Bonds. Like, we actually had a draw one time that was all Cavern of Souls and Unclaimed Territories, and we wanted to activate our Pashik Bonds, and we were just, and like, if, if, if we had the new Neo, Neo card, we would have been able to, to, uh, activate it. This was before Neo was out. <laughs> but it's like, it's, it's one card in your entire 75 card deck, and it's only one red to activate, and... I would be I would be honestly surprised if it like ever even came up again. It was like kind of an an, anom an anomaly in my opinion that it came up once. No Nexus versus a Millish deck. I mean they, they don't really have a good mill plan against you. Like they're they're not all in on mill. Mill is like plan D. Nexus is also not that good against all these cheap counter spells. Yeah, Goblins is better by having Kiki Jiki in it for Absolutely. Okay, so they can't drown my Blood Sun. They can obviously counter it or something, but. Oh, my opponent. <laughs> this is a hard lesson to learn. This is a hard lesson to learn, but we all gotta learn. You gotta fetch in response to the, uh, you gotta fetch in response to the Blood Sun. A recoil good modern card? It's not modern than Eagle. I would love to play it, though. I would love to see if it's any good. Surgical Extraction Solitude Main Phase. That's a tilted play if I've ever seen one. You place anti swavel. You just I, I just cut unclaimed territory for secluded courtyard. It's like it just it's just like the smallest deal ever. Because you still have some colored cyborg cards. You can't play just all of all of those lands. Um at least if at least if you're playing colored cyborg cards. But I would, and, and you need some fetches for Snoop. But you don't need that many, to be honest. Um Yeah, I think I'll just cast Rest in Peace and then Next turn I can hardcast Fury. This turns off so many of their cards now. Drown, Murktide, Cling to Dust. Makes their rogues worse too. Thoughts about EE in this? Uh, I mean, I don't think you need it with in your Fury Solitude deck where you play four of each of those. Let's go. 
Yeah, so it looks like... Was I playing Murktide when I was playing Teamer Rogues? Or, or sorry, Demir Rogues? Dude, my decks are a mess. Yeah, I wasn't playing Murktide. Maybe Murktide is the truth. Maybe that's the, the secret to everything. <laughs> What's the blue Araya deck list? Uh, that was kind of, I built a lot of decks last night. That was one of them. I don't know if I'm ever gonna play it. Um, I don't think it looks all that good. It looks pretty sweet. I also like definitely that you guys are sick of these like a blue affinity decks and affinity decks for the time being, but uh, this is it. Just kind of trying to like I've got to play Moon Snare, maybe a Ryo gets there. I was gonna test this off stream sometime. I put it. I haven't tested it yet, but I also kind of kind of want to cool it with the affinity decks. I'm getting kind of burned out on them. I can feel chat getting a little burned out on them too. Yeah. Yo, let's play my pet deck. Great, great uh, suggestion. I'll be flooded strand. Kaito down. Play lands to compare for dispute. Hey Spike, so I see you cut Fire Ice for March of Other Light, is that right? Uh, yes, uh, I also cut the third Chalice of the Void. We're currently 7-0 with the deck. Uh, today. Um, I've liked it a lot. March of Other Really Light has been a card that's impressed me a lot. It's not good in every matchup, just like, like no removal spell is good in every matchup, but uh, with Urza Saga being more popular and modern than it's ever been, with Hammer Time and Shadow being really popular, March of Other Really Light I think is a better choice than Fire Ice. Um, and it's also true with like all your extra mana, you do get to make pretty good use of the, the X spell, uh, instant speed. Um, I, I've liked it a lot. I've also been really impressed with March and Band Control. I've liked it a lot there too. Um, and so, I don't know, that, that might be something too. But um, I, I, have, I have a ton of decks in my, <laughs> I have a ton of decks in my uh, queues like this that are just like half built and uh, there's an idea that, that, just, that just never makes it to the stream. And that's probably gonna be one of them. Please try. Yeah, I, I, a lot of decks like this, I, I you know, I don't, you know, this is kind of why I don't usually like talk about the, these kinds of decks on stream, although I'm having a good time doing it today. But it just, it, these just take time to cook. These decks just take time to cook before they come to the stream. But yesterday I, did, just, I was just in a feverish state with Discover the Impossible, trying to make it work. I, I think I had a different version. I think I actually, I think I, I copied this list. I, I, don't, I don't think you actually want Galvanic Iteration. Um, I don't think you actually want iteration. I was like trying to find like a version with Aria Flame, but that might be one I tried tonight. Okay, finally playing against some Grixis Shadow. We messed around with a Thopter combo deck with Emery Reality Chip Box Amber, not with Reality Chip. <laughs> so let's all just agree. I'm, I'm just never going to play Reality Chef in a non in a non hammer deck, and uh, we could just all agree that I'm just never going to tell you that it's going to be good and, until I do, I guess. But <laughs> we can just move on. We don't need to ask every day about Reality Chip. What's the point of Reman in the Century decks? Does it go infinite? Um, not infinite, but it can get it can give you a lot of value casting it like. You can remand your own Manamorphose and copy your remand, and so it, it can go kind of crazy. Yeah. Okay, just casting Ragavan. What are they holding up? They don't. I don't have cards in my yard for Drown. What about Banning Lairs? Can we bring that up every day? We could, and now I've got Old Border Prismatic ending, so I'm now legally and contractually obligated to declare that. Luris is fine, actually, every single day. 
his Remanda card still. It's okay in like some combo decks like that Ascension deck. Um, but it's it's not like a, not a great card. Yeah. That list, I think you also probably need the main deck Prismatic Ending in that Ascension list too. Um, and maybe not. I, I thought I had a different version too. Sorry, let's... What did I... I don't know what I would have called it though. <laughs> I might have just covered Discover. I don't know. It's in here somewhere. No, Inquisition's so good against me here, taking my Blood Sun. Damn it. Destroy Target Land, 23 months. Appreciate you. It's a long time. Let's see Piracy Charm. Yeah, we, before like Modern Horizons 2, we had like, like a pretty cool Piracy Charm deck that played Dreadhorde Arcanist. It's actually pretty good. Swag, you can switch Prime. Appreciate you. You know, this is this is the um, these are the deck lists of a bad man. I, I delete decks all the time too, but I just for years I've been building decks nonstop. There has to be a storm deck to discover the possibility and evoke calamity. I don't think so. Maybe. See the truth works to discover. No, d discover only hits. It only hits instants. I, I looked at every single Modern Legal instant man of value one or two, uh, or zero to two yesterday. But it, it this yeah this card only works with um. Only works with instants, not sorceries. Was there a reason not to grab Kahira? I'm holding up March of Otherworldly Light. Um, I also like, hold on. So yesterday I was also like looking at Discover the Impossible and I was like, can you overload Cyclonic Rift if you, I was like, can you overload Cyclonic Rift if you hit it off of March of Otherworldly Light? I think, I think you can. I think you can. And so I was like, I rented, okay, this is fine. I rented, um, four March of Otherworldly Lights, four Cyclonic Rift, and like 52 Islands and I was just in the test queues. It took me like a million tries to actually cast it, but you can't. Or at least like Magic Online didn't let me do it. Magic Online didn't let me do it. <laughs> but it would have been pretty sick. But I was like, overload Cyclonic Rift off, to, off of See the Truth. We can play this in like a Simic Reclamation deck. <laughs> yeah. Oof. No, I meant to click the ending. Fuck. Cast it off March. Sorry, cast it off Discover or uh, Discover the Impossible. Yeah, that's what I meant. Dude, they should just like ban Snapcaster. It's been the best blue threat in Modern for too long. Yeah, they're definitely playing the obviously playing the more um, grindy version. You can go to the IRL judge chat to find out the answer instead of wasting hours in the test queue. No, you can. No, I wasn't. I didn't waste hours in the test queue. You, you, I, it took me like ten minutes. But you, you can, you can play test decks single player. It's, it's kind of like a really unknown feature or like a feature that. Yeah, it's pretty. I guess a pretty unknown feature. But if you go to the constructed queue, you go to like sorry, o open play. You can create a match with one player. You can create a match with one player, and then look. We're just we're just testing. We're just testing by ourselves. A little tutorial there, huh? I got some good top decks, but we're obviously pretty behind here.
Can't you free form versus friend? You can, but you don't need to. You just do it by yourself. No friends required. Not where we're going. <laughs> friends? Not here. Okay, so bring in the chalices, the rest in peace. Trim our deluge, we're bringing three rest in peace. And then I think I'm cutting the furies here. I might be a little light on wing cons, actually. Maybe I'll cut one ending on the play. Three furies? That's probably fine. No, I, prob I probably need six incarnations. I think that's a mulligan. Can keep this hand though. Dodge discard spell, dodge discard spell, no. <laughs> Guess I could have put back the rest in peace to dodge inquisition. May have been the uh, big brain tech. Our seven match win streak may come to an end against uh, Grixis Control here. Hmm. It's guarding a Solitude, I suppose. So two more Rest in Peace in the deck. Okay. Don't mind drawing Lotus Field when I've got the Flagstones. Definitely just going to hold up Deluge. It's nice that they can't currently drown the Deluge, but obviously they, they do usually get some more counter spells post board. Also, very notably, my opponent has the classic Island Croxa combo. So we're safe from Croxa for at least one extra turn. Call me. Thank you for two months. Appreciate you, buddy. Welcome back. I'll take Blood Sun Chalice. Okay, let's Blood Sun first. I think there's obviously a good chance that this gets drowned or counterspelled. But then we can go Flagstones, Chalice on one. And we can Solitude the Ragavan. And we should be pretty safe from croak so they would have to like consider into the chalice and then have a fetch land to croak to this next turn exile is dressed down so they're just gonna cantrip here it looks like uh i think this no this was this was wrong for them to do this in the end step because they missed their land drop it, yeah, it would have been better for them to just main phase that to try to hit their land i think um, so we've got an interesting decision point here where I can prismatic ending this dress down, which turn is a, is a card out of the graveyard here. Um, I think I, I'm, I'm just not going to do that. Red Breda, like they just need like any fetch line to skip crooks anyways. Snap iteration. Okay. Resub is Lotus Field Day? Hell yeah. 20 and 4 locally. Awesome. Yeah, this deck's great. We're 7 and 0 on the day, actually. Okay, so next turn I've got 7 mana. Probably main vision deluge to play around Counterspell. They have Dispute. That's about it. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I think we take. Blood Sun, Blood Sun? And discard a Blood Sun to Kroxa if they play it. No, I'll take Blood Sun March, because they can't they can't Inquisition my Blood Sun. Again of the three months, thank you, buddy. Oh yeah, Fluster Storm too, good point. Any thoughts to not grabbing Triumph if it can be cycle drawn? 
So yeah, usually I grab Triomes if I think that I either need the fixing or if I think I would not cycle if I draw it. Um, and up to this point, like my hand's just been all spells, so I don't think I'm cycling Triomes if I draw them. But maybe I, maybe at this point I would. It's kind of close. It's usually pretty close and usually doesn't matter that much, but that's the general rule of thumb. Iteration, Exile Delta. They don't, they do not escape Kroxa. So I have seven mana. Why don't we go ahead and start with a nice Chalice on two? Maybe Bloodstone was the better bait. It's kind of close. I also really want Bloodstone to resolve. I mean, maybe I want it to resolve. Worse than I actually needed to. It's just so important to stick one. Okay, I'll discard this to Kroxa. If they escape it here. Look at Chalice one two just kinda went, yeah, I agree. The guy the guy picked the wrong bait spell. Pretty good turn. I think I'll cycle the Blood Sun. Yeah, opponent never wants to cast the Kroxa. We've been pretty bad about our position, but you know, we can afford to take one L today. <laughs> Don't need to trophy every league. Finally escaped the Kroxa, the Kroxa that was foretold on turn two. Bionic Broccoli, thank you for the uh, the cheer. <laughs> yeah, I've been slandered. People people think I hate Kolagon's Command now, but <laughs> I just don't think you should play Kolagon's Command in the. Um, and your red black artifact synergy decks. <laughs> but everybody's like, man, Spike just hates Kolagon's command. I'm not gonna play red counter spells here because we can't beat them. Wait, right, GG. Took our first L of the day with grace and dignity. How did I get the old border endings? Uh I, I signed a deal where I have to say that Luris is should not be banned in modern. I have to say this every 30 minutes. And um, in exchange, Wizards gave me four Old Border Prismatic endings. And Luris is, Lur is fine. Uh, Ixlon was a cool set, actually. Um, and... Uh, um, Maybe we should bring back the NPL actually too. Really, what was so bad about the NPL, huh? I'm trying to think about this chalice. I think it was played on zero. Yeah, Golos also belongs on the ban list. Wizards should definitely not intervene and unban Golos. That would be silly if they did. What's, What's up? up? It's, it's me, your friend's firing spike. I think I'm not furying the uh, Lone Me Midmite. What's in PL? You don't want to know. <laughs> A question better left unanswered, I think. I'd love for my opponent to play an Urza Saga. Just an island. Their main deck and Relic. That's something I've been doing, I think, in most of my lists. Alright, one card left in their hand. They can get another card off the relic. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, Oko was, uh, yeah. And I, it was kind of like the player's fault for using Oko on your opponent's permanence. Like, really, that card was meant to be used on, uh, yeah, your, your own food tokens and stuff. And, like, <laughs> although Oko is pretty unbalanced, even. Even with that in mind, still not a, a particularly balanced card. Okay, uh, what are we doing here? I'm probably going to Fury the Urza. Fury the Urza, March the Constructs. They have plenty of affinities. There's not really any point, I think, in marching now, except to maybe play around Metallic Rebuke, but I think I'm okay not playing around Metallic Rebuke. Just one card left in their hand. No second Urza, one time. <laughs> Just a Shadow Spear equip. We're at a pretty pretty healthy life total. Urza Sagas are shut off. Tip my land drop for turn. Feeling pretty good. Obviously, like if they top deck another Urza, we're not in good shape. Or top monitor, top cast. Yeah, I think it's gonna go south. <laughs> Puts the Urza Saga right in the graveyard where it belongs. Worst card of modern Urza Saga. There's just millions of cards that <laughs> make this embarrassing. Worst card in the format. I was hoping to find at least a land. <laughs> Ideally a uh, Lotus Field. Didn't find either of those things. Five, eight damage done to three. So just even a fury is not quite enough by itself next turn. I guess I'm exiling the shadow spear and then tap draw this turn. Need to find a fury or solitude. Solitude might buy me turn two. I get to game three. Yeah. After I guess fury fury could buy me turn if I pitch cast it. Oh no, sorry, it's actually still not quite enough. Let me find uh to fairy into cryptic or something wild like that. Well I guess it would maybe Lotus Field Cryptic actually would have to be would have to be it. Okay, Solitude, March of Otherworldly Light. If I could hard cast the Solitude, we've got a chance. But I can't. Okay, game two. Uh, yeah, we're not playing Supreme Verdict in this deck. With four, with four Fury, four Solitude, like, I find that you don't usually need the Verdicts. Uh, obviously, like, obviously Verdict is always going to be a card you want when you're really behind a board and your opponent has a lot of creatures in play, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's correct to play it. So I want to the 11 months. Appreciate you. I think I'm going to bring in the four Wear Tears, cut the Cryptics. I don't know how many Chalices I want. Probably like three. I cut an awakening. This seems fine. Yeah, yeah, verdict. I guess verdict's not that hard to cast with Lotus Field. Just have Lotus Field for white and your other land for blue, usually. It's a, it's like three mana permanents that are kind of hard to cast. Well, only the five. Wheels falling off, huh? Keep. Uh, let's let's chalice on zero. Feeling lucky. Cyborg. Uh, I don't think so. Listen, like it's supreme verdict. There are going to be spots where it's good, but I've I've been pretty. I've been played. I've played a lot of this deck. I've been pretty happy without it. I don't think that it's necessary. Anymore. 
Negate? What? Negate is wild, dude. Okay, opponent's stuck on two lands. They should probably have... I guess they have another counter spell, because if they... Like, why else would they crack the clue main phase if they're missing their land? They're still not cracking the clue. Maybe they think they need it for affinity. Cast this while they're tapped out of blue. Take second flagstone solitude. They have no blue mana up. Pretty good about our spot. Still not second to clue token, I don't know. Alright, 4-4 four, four nettle cyst. Not too scary. And they had to tap out again. I guess it's technically correct to um It's technically correct to plus the Teferi first, but I think we'll be okay. They want to spend their limited mana equipping the Nettle Cyst on the Crab. That's also fine with me. It does make it a 4-7, which my Fury doesn't block that well, but I can uh, kill the Nettle Cyst. Okay. Hmm. Did they maul? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I think my Chalice on Zero is actually just kind of like quietly doing some work here. I don't think I need to pitch Solitude here. Maybe it was good to like kill Nettle Cyst in response. Oh, I can't. Oh, yeah, I should have destroyed Dark Steel Citadel. Yeah, that's actually exactly what I should have done. Grant the Blood Sun does that. Five cards in their hand. How did Crab become top two as uh, Moon Snare prototype? Okay, let's use Wear Tear to kill Nettle Cyst, I think. Oh, opponent definitely has counter magic up. <laughs> Hopefully just negate, because I've got two solitudes. Just now two solitudes in a march. So they no longer have negate up after solitude resolves. So I'm pretty sure I'm just supposed to exile the Construct now. Before they can get Negate back up. And then... I think I attack for six. I'm okay trading Solitude for Frogmite. Gotta make sure not to forget about the Memory Deluge. And, but I'm not. De I'm not definitely casting it end of turn here since um, I do kind of suspect that my opponent's got some counter magic. I, I, I would probably rather try to cast the solitude here. I don't know, solitude the Urza in response to the ETB. Urza is such a uh, silly magic card. Draws a card. Three mana left after this. I feel like these affinity decks are like my favorite decks to play against. I don't know. Like you always have like these sick interactive spells that do they're really effective and they're doing a lot of, a lot of powerful linear stuff. Any situations come up where I wish I had fire ice over March? I mean, not any like super specific situations today, but it's like it's obviously the case that like those two cards are really different and they're gonna be better in different situations. Uh, but I think March is better in the metagame at the moment. There aren't like a ton of one toughness creatures. There's obviously some. But I haven't I haven't like been longing for fire ice and we're also currently seven and one on the day. I think that, that you know kind of speaks for itself. Double block for the extra life.
Okay, so let's uh, fury the thought monitors. What's an Elder Ring? I'm having a good time. I'm kind of itching to play it again, though. <laughs> I've been pretty busy. Maybe I'm supposed to attack with one of the Furies. But definitely flashing back the Deluge now. They don't have counter magic up. Okay. Love taking. I guess we just take March March. Okay, here looking pretty good with the uh, triple incarnation in play two. Ice Cantrip is definitely something you might miss. Yeah, for sure. Like, Fire Ace is, was very good at the deck, too. But so is, so is March. You can't play all the good cards. <laughs> Please, nobody. I don't want to see a single Yorion in the chat. There'll just be, like, one Chalice in the draw. Chalice is a lot worse in the draw in this matchup. <laughs> but Spike, you can. You can play all the good cards. And flicker your Blood Sun for value with Yorion. <laughs> the perfect card for any deck. Yeah, Fury on. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, this hand's fine. It doesn't have red mana for the Blood Sun. Turn one ending's really nice in this matchup. We can sack Flagstone to Lotus Field if we miss. Turn one ending's definitely something you want to see. <laughs> okay, our last league was a 5 0, but I also um, <laughs> was showing off how to play Dust by yourself with the Just for Fun. Uh, Marshall Mother Really Light would be cool to exile Citadel. Or that maybe it would be better to exile Drum. We are going to get tons of mana, assuming my Blood Sun resolves, though. Four cards in their hand. No more blue mana at the time of making this comment. Best case scenario right now, they just play Urza Saga. Which is not what they did. Uh, I'm going to slam the Blood Sun. I think there's a good chance it gets countered, but I just have to cast it. It doesn't get countered. Make them have it. <laughs> Again, not sacking the clue token. They hate sacking this clue token. Signs to play the Urza. Likely a good choice. Three cards in hand, four extra mana. That would make sense why they wouldn't crack the clue token. But they've got Urza. They're going to spin. Yeah, notably their spell bomb can potentially protect their Urza too. They're spinning, hitting a Citadel, which they can't even play. Lucky for us. That'll do. We've been drawing pretty hot today. It's a world where we ran with Flagstones plus Lotus there and go boom, go second next turn. I mean, if you really, if you want to play around a counter spell, you can. But, you know, I, I feel like just like not impacting the board that turn is just like too, too awkward. And, like you're still weak to a counter spell the next turn anyways, when they counter your Blood Sun. So I think you just have to play into it there, and we got rewarded for it. Two Urzas? They got they got two Urzas in this deck? It's legendary, and they have two. <laughs> Ridiculous. Ludicrous, even. Dork with the 23 months? Appreciate you. Yeah, two, they, they should call this deck Tuza, huh? <laughs> Wasn't that funny? Gonna spin before caught attacks. Was it the original Ledger League? Could I have one in the deck? It may have been. It was pretty before my time. I'm not surprised. This is the second time they've cast a Moonsnare prototype, that I, and I kind of feel like they should have uh, saved it for saved it to channel. It's the second time they've done that. All right, let's chump lock. This Teferi Plus is worth six mana and a card, so even though we have a second Teferi in hand, I 
am pretty interested in getting <laughs> the six mana and a card. Not obviously don't have to play the other Teferi this turn. Ooh, one cryptic command in the deck, you say. Uh I think I'll take Cryptic Lotus Field. And then I am kinda weak to I am kinda weak to a um counter spell. They only have one card in their hand though. I guess I can Desperation Cycle Trium into a Solitude. Everybody close your eyes and hope your last card's not a counter spell. Or that they don't spin into a counter spell. Okay, I don't love them tapping their creatures for this. Maybe I mean I I do love it, but I don't know that it's correct. Yield to unstep, cycle triumph in the turn. Have roughly millions of mana next turn. Then I'm coming to an equation about reality heist. I think it's a totally viable way to build the affinity deck. There's also like, you know, we found I think we found a good build with reality heist, which was not something uh, that I necessarily thought was possible. I, I wasn't sure that there was a good home for reality heist, but we did we did find one. Um and so that I think that I'm going to continue to look for other shells, but um, time will time will tell if there are any other good ones out there. Okay, we are a little, a little light on action. We got two deluges in the yard. We get to plus for six mana. Yeah, we're doing all right. They're not playing cryptic command, are they? You, you can cast the Urza spell until end of turn. They, you don't have to cast it immediately. Ooh, they finally channeled. Okay, I'm going to put that on the bottom. Negative one mana to fairy. The Solitude kill the Urza. And I'm, I I can I should probably Valakut Awakening instead of Memory Deluge because then I can also cast a Solitude. All right. I forgot about the Aether Spell Bomb. I guess the turns Cryptic Command. Oh yeah, sorry. I cited out all but one Cryptic Command which I've already cast. Uh, let's put back every. I, I think I should keep the other Teferi. Put back these three cards. Okay. Pretty exciting game. Why didn't they spin upkeep just to spin main phase through the spin? Yeah, yeah, that was a mistake. They're, I mean, they were also trying to see what they drew, I think, but it's not too deep. It's just a mistake. Yeah, I like playing against the Infinity decks too. I think they're my favorite decks to play against right now. Do I consider Shadows from the board at all? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing because Chad just always wants me to teleport the perfect cyber card to my hand. But it's like, Wear Terror is just like, Wear Terror is great against, it's better against Hammer and, uh, and Titan, which are both super important uh, cards to deal with at the moment. <laughs> so it's like, I think you should play Wear Terror over Shadow Storm. Wear Terror also pitches to both Fury Solitude. It's cheaper. <laughs> but it's it's just it's just so easy to be like, Spike, maybe we should consider a uh, Shadow Storm, huh? What do you think about Shadow Storm? Okay, so they're going for the kill. I guess I'm gonna wear tear the Nettle Cyst. Jump block here, take a big hit. I think I, do, I don't know that I actually cast this awakening. Maybe I'll put away the Teferi. I should, I should probably use the mana.
Alright, we get to deal with all the tokens. Immediately. Although, maybe I should actually go XL token, XL token. But then XL Urza with the third march. And then I can Otawara this token. <laughs> um, then untap a bunch of mana and maybe try to draw into something reactively if I need to. Man, that response felt effect excessively condescending. Well, I'm sorry you felt that way. You know, I uh, wasn't meant to be. I'll hate me eight months. I hope you can appreciate my position where I'm in spots like this constantly where uh, people will suggest a card like Shadow Storm would be perfect here, but it's not like correct to put in the sideboard. Um, I also gave like a pretty detailed explanation for why not. But uh, I'm sorry if it came off condescending. It was definitely not my intention. Why play that land and not save it for Givalka? Because I've got like nothing but other card draw effects. Like I might be wanting to Oh, I was thinking, so I was thinking I could Deluge into a 5-drop. I can't, actually. Maybe it didn't matter. Yeah, maybe I should have held it, because I couldn't Deluge into a 5-drop. Solitude, specifically. Alright. Pretty easy Fur Fury Solitude here, I think. Corner officially turned. <laughs> Opponent says they're testing reality chip. It's funny. You got deck tech, Fran? Take a look. On the house for you. Right. Probably not able to come back from this, right? I talked about Franz Grixis. I haven't. I guess that's what his the, the, the deck tech is. <laughs> All right, pretty close to ultimating. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna get to, but I'll uh, say. I guess this time I'll save the Valakin Awakening for the uh, to fairy ultimate and just nuke their entire board. I think it's also Kihira time. <laughs> they were discarding Memory Deluge. <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay, go ahead, it's the GG. Three and one, seven and one on the day with Lotus Field. Uh, I, guess I would keep this against a Luris deck. I think against no Luris and Mulligan. Um, one thing I was thinking is like, I think that Ragavan is actually fine with um, consumes all because like there's there's two scenarios right. One scenario A, you have Ragavan going and you don't need to cast consumes all, but you have Ragavan going so you're winning. Or two, your Ragavan's being blanked by blockers, or it's dead, and you just get to cast Consumes All, and it's fine. So I, I know, you know, that the suggestion of adding Ragavan to the deck may be kind of boring. Uh, but th this is uh, this is my suggestion. Is that I think I think I'd like to see like Ragavan over Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, you can also dash and like just like play around it. So. And like maybe we cut the fourth Jace too, the three stack guys, there's fourth Jace for four Ragavans. But cool list for sure. Like I, I you know this is I think this actually gives me like a lot of ideas. Um on, on like Grixis consumes all, which is something I've been a little stuck on to be honest. Okay, not sure what variant they're playing. I do know that if this uh Bloodstead resolves, we are gonna be in pretty good shape. Force pitching agents. Looks like we're playing against rhinos. Two shardless agents. Hmm?
Let's see, we can away this Lotus Field. Now that we don't have the Blood Sun anymore. The Hardcast of Fury next turn. It's probably going to be a little slow, though. Yeah, I agree that John doesn't work with Consume Saul because of Tarmogoyf. Like, Tarmogoyf and Renin Six are like your main reasons to be green. Both of those are really awkward. Hide Sugo. Is that how you pronounce it? Hide Sugo? Damn. It's a cool, it's a cool uh, problem to solve. I was looking at some shells for it yesterday. But I think I think Frank friend definitely got a lot closer than I did. He depth so go. I feel like I'm not any closer. I'll just never play the card and uh, I won't have to worry about it. Um, I've also been kind of obsessed with this card lately. It's not any good. <laughs> it's not any good, but I've been dreaming about it. I've been just daydreaming about uh, the Kami War. Just like, this card's so sick. Wait, this is six mana? <laughs> Dude, I've been daydreaming about the Kami War being five mana. I've been daydreaming about casting it off Gigantha, and it's, it's six. Okay, never mind. Daydream killed. I, oh. I've i looked at this card, so, I, I've been staring at this card for so long, it's the first time I've seen this generic symbol here. I'm getting like Mandela affected into a different universe where this card actually costs six the whole time. Okay, we're dead. We do get four chalices post board. We have four syndications. We can cut our prismatic endings, I think, keep in March of Other Ruby Light. Trim a Fury and a Valakut Awakening. Yeah, but I've been daydreaming about this card. Exile, non land permanent, and then get to bounce a non land permanent, make your opponent discard a card, and then look how cool the flip is. It's a 6 6 Flying Trample Dragon that, that like gets plus X plus O. It becomes like a 12 6 when you attack with it. I guess I'll just have to play it in Pioneer, I guess. This is like my excuse to play Pioneer is casting the Kami War. I love that card. Yeah, no, that, that, that card that card is I don't I don't think playable in it's like maybe like maybe if Niv Mizzet were a deck you could play like it as a one of if it costs five, but it costing a six, it's just like not close to playable. But boy 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 is that card so cool. Yeah, pitches to all the elementals. What's the reason for Valakut in that deck? In this deck, uh, Valakut Awakening does a few different things. One, uh, it's you know not that hard to mana flood in a deck with you know Teferi, uh, Blood Sun cards that just cantrip with no selection, so it gives you a lot of selection. It also gives you a density of land drops to hit, which is very important in your Blood Sun, in your Lotus Field deck. It's very important that you're hitting your land drops, like this hand. Like I just can't keep this hand because I don't have enough lands, but like. It does a good job of make sure, making sure you keep a, a relatively good balance of lands and spells. And it also enters untapped if you have Blood Sun in play. So the, the downside of playing the tap land is reduced a little bit. Are the Modern Horizons sets Pioneer legal? Uh, no, but that, that's not a Modern Horizons card. That's a um, Neon Dynasty card. So, dude, I love the Eldest Reborn too. I, I played Eldest Reborn in Standard. I love that card. Yeah, that was like that was right when Sagas first came out. I really like Sagas. I, I'm glad that they're continuing to explore the Saga design space. This isn't even on my uh, prismatic ending script. I, I really, really like Sagas. I, I'm excited to see more Saga design space explored. Um, yeah. I think Discover could be playable with something relatively fair. Counterspell Drown. Maybe speed up to four friends to give me a quarry coming line. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you're responding to us talking about it earlier. But yeah, I, I was yeah, I was in a fever dream with Discover the Impossible Hello. yesterday. Modest secret for the raid, dude. Welcome back. Welcome to raiding every single day. But so I was I was kind of looking at maybe playing it in like a low to the ground Sultai control deck. And I, I kind of got stuck here because this deck like can never ever beat a Murktide. So maybe 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 a Grixis instead. Maybe a Grixis in the as you play Terminate. Um, 
But yeah, Discover the Impossible, like, letting you find frantic inventory more often is kind of interesting. So I'm, I, I haven't actually played, I haven't actually cast Discover the Impossible outside of the practice queues, trying to see if Discover the Impossible lets you overload Cyclonic Rift for, uh, if you cast it off of it, but it doesn't. Um, okay, Force Pitching, Fire Ice. A little bit of a digression, I guess. <clears throat> um... But then I was also like trying to think. I was also thinking that if if you could ever copy Discover the Impossible with Pyromancer's Ascension, I feel I think you just win, right? I think you just win because you get to like you get to copy the discovers, then you get to copy the spells you cast off the of discover. It's just like wow. <laughs> Wow, that's so much value. Doom Blade. I think I would just, like, I don't know. I think I'd probably just be red for Terminate. We'll see. Doom Blade's, like, I don't think super main deckable. Maybe it is. When you have active pyramids, that you use to usually anyways. I mean, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's an excellent point. <laughs> Why not drown in that shell? I mean, listen, this is like a super early, super early drafts. You could play drown. Um, like I even this, I even like just ripped a, the teamer reclamation mana base and just kind of started here. Cause I was also thinking this could be a reclamation deck. So I kind of have like a reclamation shell half built and then I've got this half built. I'm kind of kind of obsessed with it. Am I really gonna evoke Fury? I don't think I can afford to. I think I just have to pass. Putting Otawa and Sulta hip against Murta. Yes, yeah, so Otawa is a very good card. Reman cannot bounce the spell itself. I can Reman can bounce itself if, if that's what you're asking. We out of here. We out of here. All right, so 5-0 into 3-0 into 3-2. Still pretty good, 8-2 on the day with Lotus Field. Obviously like a pretty swingy deck when you're running hot. It's just like, you feel like a golden god. Um, so I was thinking that I would play